verse. Third chapter of the book of Revelation. Starting reading the fourth verse. I know he was talking about seven different churches. Here in the first couple of three chapters here of the book of Revelation. I realize that each church has their problems. But to me, tonight, I feel like that our churches today can kind of associate themselves with the way all this Asian church is lukewarm. Just have the form of godliness, denying the power of their own. Just kind of going through the motions of having service. Just kind of going through the motions of in the service of God. Many of them don't want to rock a boat because they pray they might hurt their attendance. Many of them will not stand behind the pulpit and preach the truth because they pray they might hurt somebody's feelings. Many of them will not stand behind the pulpit and even mention the word hell because they afraid somebody might get afraid of me. May not come back. But we are also living in a time that that people need to hear what does say the word of God. As as preachers and different individuals that stood up here tonight, many other individuals, we need to have backbone to stand up and preach what's in between the cuts. And uh, I guess you might call me old-fashioned or whatever, whatever you might want to call me, but I like the old King James Version. Amen. Amen. I like reading in the book of Genesis. I like reading in the book of Revelation and everything in the point. I believe what it says. I believe every I that's dotted and every P that's crossed. I believe every theory that's in it, it's there for a purpose and yeah. for a reason. For our example, uh, the Old Testament is for our, our example. The New Testament is for our way to reign God. I realize we're living in a time that a lot of individuals will not endure sound doctrine. But I also realize that's where the Word of God teaches you and I. Talks about individuals that is falling away in the latter days. It talks about individuals that are liars and whoremongers and adulterers and idolaters. It's talking about individuals that do not know Jesus Christ, their personal Savior. And as I read in the Word of God and Jesus, I many times spoke of a place called hell. And he was talking about individuals that had 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 the opportunity to escape that place called hell. But I remember, uh, I'll get to the reading here in just a few moments. Just hold on with me just a few moments. God has just kind of revealed this to me as I stand here before you. I think about as Christ is trying to tell the church and trying to tell the world that there is a heaven. And but yet as much as there is a heaven, there is also a hell. And I think about the rich man. The Bible says that he died. You know, in this life he had a lot of things. In this life he had everything that seemed like that you could ask to have in the materialistic things of this world. But yet he liked one thing, and that was knowing Jesus Christ as his personal Savior. In this life he had servants. In this life he had food, anything that you could desire to have. And I have never seen America and the general society that has been blessed more than it is in the society that you and I are living in. I think about that. And they said he's 95 years old. And, and, and that generation of people, they were brought up the hard way. 
Dad had told us he always wanted to make sure we had shoes on our feet because he grew up uh, without shoes on his feet. I've heard him make the statement that he had to follow behind the old horse where he didn't have those shoes and had to wrap leaves around these toes because uh, the, the toenails of the horse were back in the quick and they were uh, beginning to bleed. They grew up the hard way, and yet that generation, how they still wants to put everybody else in front of them. Do you ever notice how much respect they show to everybody else? But our generation has come along, and we have kind of forgotten uh, that, uh, that, that Jesus needs to be put first, and, and our fellow man ahead of us. But we are being taught so much today uh, that get it what you can before somebody else can. We have lost the humbleness about us. The church has lost its humbleness about us. I, I think about the rich man, as the Bible said, and Jesus was there talking about how the rich man died, and he lifted up his eyes, and being in hell, being in torments. A plural word. I knew it wasn't very good in English, uh, but when they added that S on that, I realized it meant more than one. In hell, he lifted up his eyes, uh, being in torments. But yet he talked about a, a beggar. How he was laid at the gate, and he said he was desiring the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. He was desiring uh, the very crumbs that fell from this rich man's table. He said how the, the dog would come to lick the sores upon his body. And if I understand the scripture a little bit in there, uh, the rich man didn't have much compassion upon Lazarus in his life down here. I don't know if he even would give him the time of day. Uh, but yet I realize that the Bible says that Lazarus, uh, whenever he left his earth down here, he said he was carried away and rather he was placed in Abraham's bosom. Folks, he was placed in a place called heaven, if you please. And I want you to notice what the scripture began to talk about. He said in, in hell, uh, the, the rich man lifted up his eyes, uh, being in torment. And then he saw Lazarus in Abraham's bosom, and then he began to cry out unto Father Abraham, said, let Lazarus come down here, and let him dip a little bit of water, and put it on him my tongue, he said, for I am tormented in this way. So you see, he was seeking a little bit of compassion, whom he was not willing to do in this life down here, uh, but yet it had come to the point in time in his life, you see, uh, that the flames was lit against his flesh. The flames, uh, where he was in a place where the worm died and gone. He was in a place uh, where he uh, had no escape. He was in a place uh, where he would never be able to feel uh, the presence of God in his life, never be able to feel the calling of God in his life ever again. He would look back, and then I kind of wonder sometimes if it wasn't one of the uh, torments uh, that he was facing, that the opportunity. He had uh, uh, to look back and, and, and the opportunity that he had to help uh, uh, a fellow man uh, uh, that was desiring the crumbs that fell from his table. But he so chose, thank you, Brother Ed, he so chose not to. He was, had the opportunity to help a fellow man, but he chose not to. And now he was desiring the very thing uh, that he chose not to do in this life down here. The rich man in hell with the every guy and being a torment. Church, we got to be careful at the lukewarm stage if we get our, find ourselves in. The Bible was talking about it, and I'll read it here. I said, in just a moment, he said, I would that you would have told her off. And said, if, I, I said if, you, uh, uh, if you were like that, he said, I'll speak you out of my mouth if you were lukewarm. Folks, we are living in a time that many individuals uh, just want to have the form of godness, and that's all they want. They want to have our name on a church book, and that satisfies them. And they want to just go to church on Sunday morning and make that satisfy them. Uh, but yet, I so many of them, uh, that they, even though they go to church, uh, a lot of them won't even stay and listen to the preacher preach uh, for a few minutes on Sunday morning. Uh, they want to, I guess they get that. Uh, I've also thought about this. I wonder if the Sunday school place, uh, my teacher does such a good job uh, that it builds them up so much they don't have to have anything else. I don't know. I, and it's always crossed my mind. Uh, Again, I, I find the day that you and I are living in, uh, folks, we're going through a stage and we can see uh, individuals uh, and 
And I'm talking about we, we, we find that the older folks, brother, they have stood to the test, and we see a many of them falling by the wayside uh, today. And I'm saying, leaving this world as a not as a lost individual, I don't mean to sin like that, uh, but we see them leaving this world uh, quickly as and, and they leave this world out here. And what does that leave in the church house? Uh, folks, uh, a few individuals that slip behind. I uh, brother still trying to uplift the uh, blood state banner of Jesus Christ. Uh, but what about the next generation that's coming up? Uh, folks that, 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 that they don't have the desire. I uh, brother, we're living in a time. I, uh, forgive me for uh, saying this, uh, but we are living in it for a time when we have uh, individuals that says they've been called by God, and but yet they don't have time. Uh, brother, the pastor uh, in the house of God, I don't know about you guys' organization, uh, but I know all we had trouble finding pastors. I know some of the other organizations have. I had when I was a conference president. I have had other conferences call me and ask me if we had any available ministers at the time. But yet you cannot get them. Uh, uh, and they, they say they're evangelists. I don't know where this is coming in. I'm from Brother Roy. I don't know where this is coming. I can tell them. Uh, they say they call me uh, to be an evangelist. Uh, but yet they won't preach but once or twice a year. And they think they're satisfied with that. Folks, we're in a self-satisfied state. And brother, when we go to the house of God, we can just cross up our arms and say, Bless me if you can, Lord. I let the preacher do all the work. I let the deacons do all the work. I brother, let the so I let the sons of places I think we do all the work. I brother, it's high time for us to wake up and realize I folks, every one of us here tonight has got a job.
wonder what you're talking about. But I'm talking about a little bit of faith. And then you can hold it between your fingers like this. And you saw the grain of a mustard seed. And Brother Hill said, You and I can be able to call upon the name of the living God. And Brother Hill hear our prayer. And Brother Hill answer our prayer. Praise God. As I said to you the other night, sometimes we may have to wait a little while. I go, Brother, I guarantee he hears it. I say, Glory. But I am the kind of fellow to believe. When I pray, I've heard a lot of people say the prayers don't get no further than the ceiling. I bet I've kind of led to believe whether when I pray, my prayers go beyond that. I say, Glory. But it goes into the throne of grace. I say, Praise God, Brother Dottie. It goes to the Heavenly Father who cares about over on his home. I bet it's just an old boy from Living County. I forget the mighty God came down to save my soul. The mighty God fell something better. And then, brother, he wanted to call me to the holy ministry of God. And brother, where I could be able to spread the share. I brother, the few words that Jesus Christ has to share. Praise God. They were blinded. They were blinded to the faith. They were blinded to the salvation. They were blinded to the goodness of God. They were looking at the materialistic things that he had surrounded all around about them, and they took their eyes off of Jesus, they took their eyes off the church, and they were just looking, and they were just satisfied, thinking all is well. They forgot about something. They forgot that God still had his finger upon them. They forgot, brother, that they could go to an old-fashioned altar of prayer and begin to Seek mercy and seek goodness. For God, they could go to the shepherd who was able to provide for them. They for God. I really they were trusting in the materialistic things of this world. And really they just kind of go on through the motions. They, 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 they were the Leo decision church. They were still labeled the church. But yet there was something happening that you're ready on the inside. And I kind of feel like, and I, I don't know about you other uh, pastors, the other ministers, uh, but brother, I can feel the deterioration of America. Uh, brother, from within, uh, I have saw the effects of sin in people's hearts and people's lives. I see the effect as it's spreading out into their churches, and then I've seen the effect as they stand behind the pulpit, and brother, it's not fit to still stand there. I uh, believe brother, they'll still stand there, a man and man, I uh, say it's all right for them to be married. And brother, I say, shame on the individual that will stand behind this pulpit and proclaim that and say that it's fine and dandy. Shame on those individuals who stand behind this pulpit and say it's all right to kill the unborn baby. But it's high time I go to the church and stand up and say, no, praise God. Brother, don't you think we need quite long enough? I go to the time that you're not to stand up and in town and I say, glory, glory to the Holy Spirit of God. It's in the high time. I know that we stand up and we get our prayer back in school. I say, glory, it's in the high time. I know that we put a pink of my stock on the courthouse walls. I say, glory.
testify, brother, will still stand and testify for the glory of God. The church will stand and say, hey, I know what a born again experience is. Praise God. Roger, have you found it yet? I have. Stand and read it, please, sir. If my people, which are called the mine, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, let them turn from their wicked ways, turn, then will I hear from heaven and I and will forgive their sin, hallelujah, and will heal their land.
unusual ears. Then she realized that she held him in her arms, that she was going to uh, kiss the one who was able to calm the storms of the raging sea. Then she realized who she was held in her arms. Do we realize at the church tonight? Do we realize whom we have contact with on direct contact? Instantaneously, we can have access to the kingdom of God. And it's never busy. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And that a well never runs dry. Blessings just keeps overflowing over and over again. Especially when we have that walk, keep our little hand in the hand. Blessings just keep coming. Blessed is the name. Brother Lewis has stood up preaching the gospel for a lot of years. He still represents the very gospel. They started out the very first message. He still represents that, that message of Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Folks, are we able to walk? down that straight and narrow way? Are we able to kind of to keep our hand in God's big hand to where God can get glory out of our life instead of us trying to glorify ourselves and looking around like the, uh, the, the, the little bit of Jesus church and, 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 and think, man, I have no need of nothing, Brother Bud. I, I, I'm increased with good and, and but yet little did they know. And both they could not see how blind they really was. You see. They had left the first love. They had left something behind. And they would just enjoy eating the worldly pleasures. And I see today, I see today, people are enjoying the worldly pleasures, not thinking them about, cannot see into tomorrow. So, honey, I, I ain't nobody do that. I can't really see it about tomorrow, but I do know what's going to happen one day. And it's when Jesus comes again, and folks, he's going to find a few people uh, really that's ready to go. And if I don't understand the Bible right, uh, there's going to be a multitude of people that's not going to be able to make it into the world of glory because they have chose to follow the pernicious ways. And, and, and the Bible says this, uh, pleasure and sin of season. And this life for sure, Mom. You guys can look at song. Uh, I'm not, I, I just want to quit tonight. You know, and I, I want to give you a chance you know, and a time to pray. I want to give you a time to where you can come. Maybe you've lost your joy. Maybe you, you just can't go through the motions. Maybe you're just going through the valleys. Maybe you're going through the hardships and sorrows of this little world and around about us. And it stole your joy uh, uh, from you. You just kind of go through motions. You can't get restored. Yeah. I, I remember years ago, I was going, uh, just going through the motions. I was still preach. I would still get up and, and, and in front of a, a group of people and tell them about Jesus Christ. But it just seemed like my joy had been stole away. Now, because I've been through battles after battles after battles, time and time again. But I remember what the thing was one Sunday morning over in Bucksburg Church. I was there and just about ready to start preaching and the glory of God came down and rather restore that joy in my heart and my life. I have never yeah. forgotten that. Yeah. This far I haven't forgotten that. I because that joy that was restored in my heart and the joy that I had found uh, once again. Why? Because the glory of God came into heart and for life. And brother, he was able to just to bring the happiness back down that I want to have. Praise God. God's able to do that, folks. I don't know if he's got anything to help that I sit here tonight. But I tell you what, folks. Uh, he is willing to bless his people with this way. Shall we sing in the guys are ready? I've never made a call. This is the words of the song. And it's probably too late now. Yeah, I'm right. Oh, but I don't have to worry about that much. Because I'm happy anyhow. As I go. Oh, 
Ronnie, preach. Preach his heart out. Preach the truth. God's a deal with you. Ain't got a lot of You're not saved. You need to be saved. But if you're a Christian, you're actually not a Christian. And I'm a preacher. A Christian. So if we got I've got a lot of things. God's a deal with you tonight on some issues. Oh, it's a great place to say. You'll be first if you step out. I say, well, yeah, little things that think that. Whatever it might be. Wait on the altar. Oh, here I am. You'll be first if you step out. Ready to hang you later. All right. in such a place that they couldn't even see the danger they were in. Could have been in our church today is in the same shape that they, 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 they're in such a place that they couldn't even see the danger of where they're walking at, where they're trotting at, how close they are to the end, how close they are to just going to a step too far away from God. Go close to God. If you haven't eaten it, I'm begging you.